the blinnet, no the doveum. We shim a star, be a fire on Mincha, Agus Queen and from a tool, it's a drama at a bark, it's a Mikey Sheehy, Agus Martin Furlong. Well, Kerry, you know, they're a bit different than other teams because missing a penalty for them wouldn't affect them as much as it would have affected us, you know. But saving the penalty was a big thing for us because if they, they get the penalty, um, God only knows, but um, they didn't. And that's the main thing. Kerry took the knock and kept coming, and they got four points then in an 11 minute burst, and that really was it. <laughs> Scene. They'd seen out the storm and that they were just going to ease away. As awarded as Seamus Darby comes into the game, the referee has awarded. I actually didn't, didn't think I was going to be brought on at that stage. I kind of resigned to the fact that I wasn't going to be on. I paid no heed to Seamus Darby coming on. My, my job that day was to get Jimmy Keaveney in Mars in Ballybock after the game, and I was full sure I was going down to ask Jimmy about Kerry making history. Kiri on that Gruhain, Hunter at the Cot Hussent, the Infaris Bar, Ali Adu, Diego Nieg, Eggy Voili. We would have felt confident because we, we were experienced. We were we were after playing in, in a lot of all islands before. So like when we were two points up with two or three minutes left in the game, we knew how to handle the game. And so in our minds we might have felt that yes, we have this game won. The game is being run down and basically we think that's that. I'm not watching it. I'm down under the Cusick stand on my way to talk to Jimmy Keaveney. Agus Kiri er hoshach na stare, vi Tommy Doyle a strakal in a roll no sefune a fine him a starby. Tommy Doyle, the specialist wing half back, was now playing right full back, probably for the first time ever. With John Larry out to the wing and brought down there, brought down out there, and there is a free for the lovely men with two minutes left. Near the van vial gingele rivali and cargabog. In Liam O'Connor, Rohr doing a void to Suez Van Bark, Agus Helig Shep, Pass Crean, Etro Hul Hiri. Ach er Fasae. The kick was, in my mind, was perfectly deliberate because it was a curling kind of kick. It is, it is absolutely perfect the way it was delivered. I mean, that would have been a 50 yard, a 50 yard pass. There's very few of those even today. Well, it's here to hear, Mary. <laughs> I'd say, well, I'd say it's just pure luck. I'm sure it isn't luck, everything about, you know. Lame shame a star be us, Kyun Tommy Doyle, agus Rav Shane Leroy Gusnasta. No one marsh in a harla. Was it a foul? I think there was a little nudge, I think. Yeah, but it's no more than any corner forward would do. Tommy's six foot three or whatever, and he's a big man. And I was caught behind him, and... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get out, actually, to try and get in front, but at the last minute, I realised Tommy has gone too, I thought he'd gone too far. And Tommy Doyle would tell you that he could feel the wind of the ball on his fingertips as he, as he tried to get it, but he'd been given a little nudge, as every good, decent, smart corner forward will do. Vidli Road, a Gishlu, a Jonas Bricke, Kik Ulefe. Narva? Do I think he was going for a goal? I don't know. I don't know. I actually thought Charlie Nelligan was um, nearer to me. I thought he'd left the line. I thought he'd gone off his line. I thought he'd on the way out to fist the ball. But uh, he hadn't. But anyway, I, I, what I was trying to do was to put it under the bar and over his head. But he never even considered a pass, you know. Like he was sent in to do a job, and that's exactly what he set out to do, and he was successful. Slow, Roy. Mire, 
stupid at your top of the moon at that stage. It was fucking high as a kite, you know. <laughs> actually went running back into the Cusick stand because I heard the roar and I knew it wasn't the Kerry roar and I had to ask someone what happened and all I was told was Derby, Derby, Derby got the goal. And here's Liam Connor who's come up from full back. He sends a high ball in towards the goal now. It's fielded in there and the ball is buried into the back of the net by the sub who came on. Seamus Derby, one point in it and less than a minute left in the game. Sensation of sensations. The game is over. That is the champions. Oh dear, what a game. What a There's just this sense of disbelief. And it's the surreal sense of did that really happen? That is one of the most sensational finals I have ever seen. I went up in the ambassador that evening. And uh, Jesus, I thought my health and safety was, well, there's, there's been fucking 50,000 in the place, was black. And I remember at one stage being thrown up against the ceiling, my face in the ceiling. And I, I just couldn't get down, I couldn't, I got no control, I just could do nothing. Dinach Darby a chamora a gyr eithiw, ach nid yw'n clen a cynach yn mahonish yng ngachtyn Ferdirte and Tilene five in a row in a mask. And this fellow came over to me, you know, and he says to me, um, he said, you fucking cost me a fortune, he said. I had every caravan, he said, in Baddy Bunyan's stuff with jerseys carry five in a row. And he said, you, you little cunt, he said, you come on and you scored it all, and I, you know, fucked me up. And I said, uh, let me ask, what do you do with them? He said, I will tell you, I put R.I.P. at the bottom of them. And I headed for Tullamore, and I saw most of them on Monday night. And there goes the Samuel Ware Cup, high in the hands of Mick. James, now you're the man who turned this whole game around from defeat into victory for Offaly. Uh, how does it feel today? Well, it feels absolutely great. I, I, I still can't really believe that we've won. But, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. In 72, I would have been a young bloke, and I wasn't the one people wanted to see. And then in 82, uh, I would have been one of the lads that would be invited here, there, and everywhere, you know. I said to myself, well, I'm going to enjoy it anyway, and I did. Everything about the 82 All Ireland win was told through the prism of Seamus Darby. So, Every social aspect that followed that Offaly team in 82, Seamus Darby became front and centre of it, and he loved the social side of it. He loved pubs, but it wasn't strictly for the drink, I think. It was just for the company of people. Like, within seven months of that on Ireland, he was still out five nights a week, going to this function or that function. He got sucked into a world that at the time I don't think he realised how damaging it was being to him. You know, he paid a heavy price. I'm sure, I mean, when you're asked to go someplace, being nice fellas that we are, we do go, you know, but then when you come out then and the car is empty and there's no petrol in it, <laughs> you know, you still have to drive home and you still have to go to work the next morning and, you know, so at, at that time it was, it was tough enough, you know, and as I said, probably shameless. He doesn't say no. He was pulled and dragged everywhere. And, it, it, uh, you know, the, it, that's the time when you have to start minding your career and get on with your life, you know? In reflect from the mountains, so all souls... I guess the innovation in town, the failure of Erdely Vahar.